everybody, it's Andrea Mercier, aka Anmom, and welcome to my studio. Today is going to be a quick video. The first half is going to be a real time tutorial while I do the pouring. Then I have to wait for the piece to dry, and then we'll come back and there'll be some fast forwarding through the details afterwards. My friend Ian saw my piece, Yishu. You can go see that video right there, and he loved it, um, except the symbol in the middle. Yishu is Chinese for art and he wanted something that had more meaning. He's going to be giving this as a gift. So he asked me to put these two symbols on instead. So I'm going to be doing that after the pour dries. So we'll start in real time. Black background. He wants all reds. So I've taken alizarin crimson the three cads and some natfall crimson and we are going to create this piece for him. So as per the norm we're going to start with a background color black today. This is a lubrication layer just to help the other colors, the reds, move Spread that out. I was very excited when Ian said that he wanted me to recreate this piece. It was one of my favorite pieces. I did it last year for International Art Day as a hashtag with the CAC. There we go. I think it might be a little bit easier to see. I feel like I have more room when it's zoomed out. <laughs> So again, this is going to be a very quick pour just because it's not a very big canvas and it's not a complex color scheme. It's just all reds. And then when it dries, I'm going to come back and we're going to put these symbols on with some gold 3D paint that I made. You can see how I made that right there in that video. Okay, now Yishu was puddles. I had started with puddles of color. So I'm going to do puddles again. This is the first technique that I ever did was the puddle technique. I don't know if it actually has a name or not, but that's what I call it. So basically what I do is create puddles of color. Oh, those look almost identical. Create puddles of color. And this was my introduction to fluid acrylic pores was using the puddle method. If any of you have been following me for a while, you know that I did it out of desperation a year ago when I needed a piece really quickly that needed to be fantastical and I don't paint um, fairies or dragons or anything like that. I'm not a realistic painter. I mostly do you know some impressionist landscapes. And I saw this guy in Australia named Jacob. His channel's right there. I'll put a link down in the description. He's the one that introduced me to fluid acrylic pores. I really liked him because he was very concerned with viscosity like I am. I like things to have a recipe. That's how I came up with my recipe. Anyone who's new, you can go see how I make it, make these paints right there. I don't use mediums. I know a lot of my friends use mediums, but I teach to the general public and I can't have uh, mediums when I'm dealing with children because some of the mediums and additives that we use as artists are a little bit toxic. As it is, I use uh, Liqu Liquitec Basics paints and even though it says cadmium red deep, it's a hue so it's um, an artificial color. It's not actual cadmium so it's a lot less toddler friendly. <laughs> Anyways, this is how I started the puddle method. And 
and then what I had ended up doing after that was kind of the the messy method or the the line method where I just put a whole bunch of lines down um, it's been an interesting journey over the last year um, it's been just over a year since I started doing fluid acrylic pores and my life has changed because of it I have my art partner now we're doing big shows and public art installations my channel has grown I have a fluid acrylic painting community on Facebook where I share tips and tricks with a whole bunch of other artists from around the world who are interested in this particular form of painting and it, it's just been awesome because I've met all of you my channel has grown it's been fabulous there we go. This is a lot of paint, but I got talking and I got distracted. <laughs> so we're going to do the first throw, which I think is going to be the only, oh yeah, there's like a lot of paint on there, but that's okay. Let's let this do its thing. Woo, look at that. Wow, that is fantastic. I really like that. I just want to get some down at this corner and then push everything back. That is fabulous. I love it. And um, what corner? The corners are always. That's the only. Thing with fluid acrylic pouring of course that's my camera downloading get out of the way <laughs> my overhead camera is downloading there we go just want to make sure all the corners are covered all right I don't like that so what happened was is a drip from my hand oh and now I've just dripped water way to go Andrea you suck I really do want to remove this. And I'm not sure how to do that. Oh, that just made a bigger mess. Okay, that is... I'm going to say that's medium. Let me see if that's medium. It is. I'm going to try and cover that a little bit. And maybe it out. There we go. I don't, I did not like that. It's smushy. Okay, we'll put, let's cover this up a bit. There we go. See? Now I don't know how to fix this. I'm going to go like this and then take the alizarin crimson and push it back a little bit. There we go. I don't think this will be a problem because this is where the symbols are going to go, but just add a little bit just in case. I'm <clears throat> just going to give everything a quick shake to even it out. Ooh. See what happened with the water? It moved. That's okay. That's okay. The symbols are going to cover up quite a bit of it, but it's nice for you to be able to see that it's okay and that a lot of things can be corrected. I just want to push that orange, or it's actually not orange, it's cadmium light, red light. I just want to push that back into where it's spot. Like that. All right, heat gun to pop the bubbles. So, let me just zoom in there for you. So although this kind of looks orangey, it's going to dry red. Um, acrylic paints always dry a half to a full shade darker. And once it's dry, we will come back and continue by putting these lovely symbols. Boom! Right on it. It's going to make an awesome gift. I'll catch you on the other side. Okay, we are back and we're at a totally different camera angle. 
I am in the midst of reorganizing my studio. So I've had to take my camera that's up high, put it on the tripod, and for that I apologize. But hopefully within the next few weeks, my camera's gonna be permanently mounted on the ceiling, which will make my life easier and it'll be easier viewing for you guys. So what I've done is, is I took the two pieces of paper and I used an X-Acto knife and cut out the symbol. And then I have just very gently taped it down with some scotch tape. Now, the objective of this template is not for me to like fill it in. It's just a guide. I'm going to use my homemade 3D paint and you can check out a link right here on how I make that. And basically this is just going to be a guide for me to go and make the lines so that I'm at least recreating the proper symbol for ram and for rooster. Now, I'm just going to zoom in here. Woo! It's really a lot easier when I can actually reach the zoom button. Right here, I've put a little bit of tape. I will fill that in once I remove the template. It's just that this piece was very loose and was fluttering. So I wanted to make sure it stayed in place while I'm doing the 3D painting. Ooh. Right about there. Just so that you can kind of see. Actually, I'll zoom in to just the one. This one right here. Oh, I gotta get used to that camera. There we go. So I'll zoom in here so that you can kind of see how I'm going to do it with this paint. And then I'll zoom out and show you how I'm doing the other one. All right. I'll talk a little bit while I'm doing this so that you can see how I'm thinking. But basically what I want to do is I want to fill in the space. Give it a little, little bit of a tap. It will even out as it dries. Again, this is actually just a template. I'm not really trying to fill in all the space. I just want to make sure that the symbol looks as close to the original as possible. The last thing I need to do, since I do not read Asian caricatures, is... Uh, accidentally write something else that I don't even know what I'm writing. So there we go. I'm going to try and get my hand in good. canvas just to try and level everything out. Give that a tap. Just lifting up the paper here because I still have to fill in. 
between these two pieces, I'm going to lift this off. So, and fill in this piece right here. Can you see that? Yeah, right here. This piece here. Let's do it little. There we go. There we go. There we go. There's a couple of places. Where I'm just using a baby wipe and a stick. Just, just, like I'll never be able to clean up all the edges. But the places where it's like really apparent, I'm just gonna... Oh, I think I'm going to clean that up. I don't know if I'm going to be able to or not. the paint. I think I might be S-O-L. Let me zoom out. Oops, wrong way. There we go. So my hope is that tonight it will settle down a little bit and smooth out a little bit. And that, that will be cured by tomorrow and Ian will be able to give it as a gift. I actually think it turned out really cool now that I'm looking at it. When I did Yishu, the other one, um, I instead of using my homemade 3D paint, I used my Liquitex uh, fluid acrylics when I um, thinned them down and it started to spread. So I didn't want that to happen this time. being a perfectionist. <laughs> what valuable lesson have we learned? Don't touch it. Just leave it. Leave it. <laughs> leave it alone. So here we go. This is Ram and Rooster. This should be dry sometime tomorrow. I was going to gloss varnish it and I changed my mind because as you can see right there, see that alizarin crimson? It has some really cool shine to it so it gives it another look. It looks kind of matte, kind of glossy. So I decided I wasn't going to touch it. I was just going to leave it alone. So I'm going to leave this alone and let it cure overnight. Ian will be able to give this as a gift and I think it turned out pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. So if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that you can follow me on my artful journey. I hope that you enjoyed your time here and that you got some cool ideas. It's always better when you're here.